Hey, welcome back. We get to talk about the last formula that involves lines that we're going to have for the foreseeable future. So right now we know a lot about lines. We know about plotting points to graph lines. We know about intercept method to graph lines. We know about slope intercept method to graph lines. We know how to find an equation of a line from a, a, a slope and a point. Now we make it a little bit more concise. So the last formula, the last thing that we do uh, with lines for a while, besides just graphing the heck out of them, is finding the equation of any line given a point and a slope. That's where the point-slope form of a line comes in. We're going to explore that in this video on where that comes from. The next few videos we wrap, out, uh, wrap up or talk about, unpack, I guess, how to do it. Uh, so, the, so the more application is, is later on. Right now is the where this stuff even comes from. I always hate it. I'm not the type of teacher to just give you a formula and say use it. I want you to know where it comes from, why it is the way it is. So this all starts with the slope formula, which we actually created. If you remember that, we discovered that. So let's talk about the slope formula. Now, now what the slope formula does, it takes two solid points, two definite points, finds the difference between the y's, that's the rise, finds the difference between the, the x's, that's the run, and it puts them in ratio. That creates the rise over run, the slope that we're used to, and you've seen that before. What the slope form, the point slope formula does, it says, now, the slope formula itself, it fixes two points. It fixes x1, y1, and it fixes x2, y2. What point slope says is, what if we didn't know two? What if we only knew one point and we use the slope to find the other one. So basically, we use a slope to find any other point ever. We allow that to be a variable point. So it's just anything on the line. So in other words, it says from the slope formula, let's leave one of them fixed, but let's let the other one float. So let's let the other one be a variable point, just something on the line. I hope you get that. So we're unfixing, we're un making one point not solid. One point can be any other point. That's the variable idea. So, let our second fixed point, this x2, y2, let this become a variable point, just any other point on the line. Remember the idea here, the idea here is that the slope is created from knowing two points. Point slope says, what if you don't know that? What if you only know one point, but you also know the slope? Then we don't have to know the second point. We can find it. We can use, well, this idea of let's unfix that. Let's use the slope to find that. Let's make that a variable. Well, then our slope formula changes just a little bit. Instead of y2 minus y1, I don't have y2 anymore. I just have y minus y1. Instead of x2 minus x1, I don't have that anymore. I just have x minus x1. It's changed a little bit. Again, the, the little recap here is, uh, hey, you fix two points to find the slope. Now the idea is fix one point, know the slope. You don't have to fix that second point. It can represent any point on the line. That's cool. Now, can we get rid of that fraction? How, would, how do you get rid of a fraction all the time? How do you get rid of that denominator, that thing that's being divided? Well, what undoes division? Let's use that multiplication. Let's multiply both sides by our denominator. Remember, what we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. It's going to look a little nasty for a while. This is completely gone. Please don't distribute that. Don't you dare. All I'm trying to do is get rid of my fraction. Now I'm going to start changing this around just a little bit. So I don't really like how this M is behind my parentheses. We normally write the M in front of parentheses when we multiply. Now remember, multiplication is commutative, which means I can switch junk around and it doesn't change the fact that we're still multiplying the same stuff. So I'm going to write this as M times that quantity X minus X1. On the right hand side, my fraction's gone. Now, there's only one other thing I'm going to do. I'm going to completely switch sides on this. So instead of m times x minus x1 equals y minus y1, I'm going to have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Because 
before we go any further, I really need you to get this where this comes from. So the whole idea, and a short recap, is the slope formula is created by knowing two solid fixed points. If you don't know one point, you're going to need to know only, well, if you don't know two points, you need to know one point and a way to get the other one. So provided we know one point and a slope, this should ring a bell, we need a point and the slope to find the equation of line. Provided we, need, we know a point and a slope, we don't need to know the second one. Let's let that represent any other point on the line, hence the variable idea. Well, if that's the case, then this becomes just y over x. Instead of y2 over x2 becomes y over x. In order to solve fractions, multiply by the denominator. The m goes in front of our parentheses, and we flip sides. That's where that comes from. This, check it out. Make sure this is, this is in your head. That's one point. That's the slope. That is all you need to find the equation of a line. This right here is called point slope form of line for obvious reasons. Again, we're not we're not inventive when it comes to Nate. I wish we could call it like Leonard's awesome line solving formula, but we don't. We don't call it that. We call it the point slope formula because we're boring. Because this is a point and that's a slope and that finds the form of the line for you. That's it. Here's the, the beautiful part about it. So that, that's a creation. That's, that's all we're going to do as far as creating it. We're going to do an example in a minute, but here's the beautiful part. If you know that equation, if you know one point, that point goes there, and you know the slope, that slope goes there, then this formula will find the equation of any line for you. All you need to know is one point, put it there, the slope, put it where the m goes, and solve it with some basic order operations. That's pretty impressive. Now, let's do an example. Let's see if we can, we can illustrate this. So let's find the equation of line that passes through that point, 1, 2, and has a slope of 3. Now, by the way, before we go any further, I can give that to you verbally like I've done, or it can be given to you as a graph. Could you still find the point? Yeah, sure, that's still the point, 1, 2. No problem. Can you still find the slope by climbing up 3 and over 1? So either way I give it to you, whether it's graphically or whether it's verbally, you can find the same information. Again, the only thing you need to know is one point and the slope. I want you to write that out. I want you to actually write out what the point is. I want you to write out what the slope is. You don't even need to write it as a fraction. I'm not really interested in graphing right now. All I'm interested in is finding the equation. So the cheaper the fractions, the easier the fractions, the more simplified the fractions, the better here. So our slope is 3, no problem. Our m is 3. Our point is 1, 2, no problem. Our point's 1, 2. All we have to do is understand where these three numbers fit in that formula. That's it. And it's not that hard. Here's the biggest thing I need you to get, okay? Don't ever, ever plug into x or y. Those are variables. They need to represent any point on that line. As soon as you plug in these numbers for those variables, you fixed that point, and we can't do that. Um, whenever you see a subscript in, in, in this formula, that's what stands for a fixed point. So that's what that means. So our actual numbers can only go when we, where we see a 1 and a 2. So when we look at our formula, those are your variables. They stay there. You'll never plug anything into those. Your x1, y1, that's your fixed point. Your m, that's your slope. So if it takes you going down here and identifying uh, what x1, y1 is, that's totally fine. We can make this x1, y1. Now we have a specific, identifiable, solid fixed point, and we've got the slope. All we've got to do is fill this stuff in. So let's look at it. We never plug in for our variable y. We're going to have to have a y and an x when we're done. If you start plugging stuff into that, you're not going to have that. So y minus, here's how I like to do every single formula like ever. You almost can't overuse parentheses. So here's what I like to do. I like to create for myself this little blank space. 
because if my number's negative, I want to make sure that I'm not double counting that minus as a negative also. So we'll use parentheses. What that does, that maintains your sign and also maintains your operation. So even if it's not negative and we just put 2, who cares? That's still fine. Necessary? Not in this case. In some cases, absolutely. Is it harmful to do that? No. And you're never going to get it wrong if you do that. So we're going to put y minus parentheses, whatever the y1 is. Just put it in there. I'm going to leave myself a little blank space for my slope. Uh, what's kind of convenient about the formula, y numbers go next to y variables, x numbers go next to x variables. It's kind of cool. I'm also going to do the same thing with my x's. So y minus, I got my parentheses. x minus, I got my parentheses. And then I'm looking for what my x1 is. So x1 is 1. You almost can't overuse parentheses in math. Let's put it in there. Let's make sure that that parentheses maintains operation. I'm still subtracting. Also maintains the sign of the number. So that's a big deal. So let's, let's double check real quick. So y minus y1. So I have y minus my y1 fit in there. X minus X1, I have X minus, okay, my X1 fit in there. I've got my 2, I've got my 1, my Y variables are next, to, or my Y point, Y coordinate next to my Y variable. X point, X coordinate next to my X variable. All I got to do is slip that slope right in there. Slippery slope, it's fine. And then do some very basic order operations. Y minus 2, whether those parentheses are there or are not, you're still going to do the same thing. It's why we use them all the time. Because when we need them, they're there. When we don't need them, they don't hurt us. On the right-hand side, go slow. Fix the inside of your parentheses first. X minus 1, no problem. Now, that right there, that is the point-slope form of a line. You're done. However, it doesn't really help us graph. And so to go a little bit further, I want to simplify just like we would simplify any other equation ever, I want you to solve for y. That means that we'll distribute, we'll simplify both sides first, that means distribute, and then we'll get y by itself. So basically you'll distribute and then add or subtract. Distribute, add or subtract. Distribute, add or subtract. It's all we ever have to do to get point slope into slope intercept. And slope intercept we know is really nice to graph. So let's try it. If we distribute the three, By the way, make sure you're actually distributing it. When you go fast, like on your homework or a test, and you go, oh, 3x minus 1, you're, you're cheating yourself. You want to make sure that 3 goes to all the terms inside there, all both terms inside there. Make sure you're multiplying the 3 times the 1. It's an easy mistake to make. And lastly, all we've got to do is add 2 to both sides. If we do, if we take our formula that we get here, we add 2 to both sides, we try to make some sign errors like I just made. That's kind of neat. We've just taken a point and a slope and found a very graphable, graphable, interpretable equation for it. By the way, I mentioned at the very beginning uh, that you could have got all this information from this. Does that equation make this? Look through it with me. What's your slope? What's your y-intercept? Here's your negative 1. Go up 1, 2, 3 over 1. It's the same line. That's kind of nice. That's pretty cool. That's how we use a point and a slope to find an equation of a line. If you're wondering why we have to have this, because I gave you another way. Uh, last video, very end of it, I gave you a different way that involved solving for b. Whatever way you feel comfortable with is totally fine. I don't care. I'm just giving you another method. Uh, this is very, very common for people to use this because it's a one step and you're done. It's not a, you have to solve for B and then you have to replace it. That can get confusing for people. This is a, hey, you got a point and slope, plug it in and solve for Y. That's kind of nice. So that's how we use point slope to find slope intercept and something that's very understandable, something that's relatable to a graph. That's about it for now. Um, Next time when we come back, I'm going to show you how to go through this with some more difficult examples. We'll talk about parallel, perpendicular again. At this point, all you really need to know is we created this. Do you need to know how to create it? Probably not. Uh, but this is where it comes from. I would love it if you can look at this formula and understand, yeah, that's because we fixed a point in the slope formula.
That's because we know the slope. And if I know one point in the slope, I can leave the other two hanging and solve for y every single time by knowing just one point and the slope. That's kind of neat. That's how we use point slope. Uh, that's where it comes from. I'd love it if you understood it. Next time we'll, we'll practice a lot of this stuff. I'll see you for the next video.